كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الحقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So far we have discussed about the relationship between Ma'rifah and the Taqwa. And then we saw the relationship between Ma'rifah and the Mahabba. And now we discuss about the relationship between Ma'rifah and Tawakkul. Tawakkul is... Uh, tawakkul means reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having full trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A full reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is Tawakkul. And there's a relationship between tawakkul and the ma'rifa. Because true ma'rifa breeds tawakkul. True ma'rifa, as it breeds taqwa, as it breeds the hub or mahabba, it also breeds tawakkul. And this tawakkul is uh, that the true reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So initially, first of all, we discuss about the ma'rifa, uh, its theoretical part. Theoretical part of the ma'rifa means to say that uh, Sheikh Junaid al Baghdadi rahimahullah is reported to have said that man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa rabbahu. Man arafa nafsahu, as I said, the root word of ma'rifa is from, it has been derived from arafa. Arafa ya'rifu ma'rifatan wa irfana. So Junaid al Baghdadi rahimahullah is reported to have said, man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa rabbahu. He who knew himself. He knew God. The one who recognized himself, he recognized the Lord. The one who has got the full understanding of himself, he got the understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is very true when a person thinks about, about upon his own creation, how Allah created me. Tabakan an tabak atwara wa qad khalaqakum atwara. In how in how different stages he created me, then definitely a person will believe in his existence. Or somebody who knows himself. One who knows himself means when we think about how Allah created me. And he gets the knowledge of his, for example, how Allah, I use my eyes to see. And there's a retina and that's unique in the human creation. And then all our parts of body, the functions of the organs, the way they have been designed and the coordination, control and coordination system in the human body means when we reflect upon our own creation. And which is also mentioned in one of the words in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so ayatina soon we shall show them our signs. Fil afaq, in the cosmos, in the horizons, but fi anfusin and in their own selves, hatta yatabayyana lahum annahu al-haq until it becomes manifested to them that he is true God. So our own body is it's 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 itself a universe. It's itself a universe. When we see how Allah subhanahu has beautifully created us, then undoubtedly. Those whom, whose mind is not preoccupied by any other thought. But if a person thinks new, uh, uh, neutrally and impartially, definitely our own existence, our own structure, our own uh, making will lead us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's what he said, man arafa nafsu, the one who knows his nafs, his own being, uh, arafa rabbahu, he definitely knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is one aspect. But this ma'rif, as I said, it is a close connection with the tawakkul as well. We know there are many people who believe that Allah exists, isn't it? Many, even I say the majority, overwhelming majority of the humanity believe in the existence of God. But the same breath, we need to see, do they have the full reliance and trust upon him? Varies. The level of reliance upon Allah, it varies. As far as his existence is concerned, even the Christians also believe. Jews also believe. The overwhelming majority of the people believe that Allah exists, God exists. But the level of reliance, it varies. The level of trust upon Allah, it varies from person to person, from group to group, from region to region, you can say. So this reliance of Allah, if there's true ma'rifah, it breeds the true reliance upon Allah Sheikh Abdul Wahid Rahimullah is one of the uh, famous scholar, 
Imam Ibn Jawzi mentions about him. Sheikh Ibn Jawzi is one of the great scholars of Islam. He says that uh, Sheikh Abdul Wahid mentions that once upon a time, they set out on a voyage, they set out on a trip, and they were traveling through a sea. And there was a huge storm in the sea, and their boat was tossed to some other island. And they were not knowing where they are. And when the storm was just brought to the rest, what they find that they are in an island. And when they boarded the island, they got off from the boat. When they landed on the island, what they saw there, there was a man. He was worshipping before an idol. Sheikh Abdul Wahid said, Rahimahullah, that I felt pity on him. You see, instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, he is worshipping before this idol. So I went to him. I began to talk about Allah. I began to talk about Islam. When he talked about the oneness of Allah, he got readily motivated to accept the Islam. Then he stayed with us for a few days because we were for, we stayed there for a few days. When we were supposed to leave that island, so I asked my friends to, to gather some money for him so that uh, it will be, it, 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 he, make, he make use of this money. When he handed over the money to him, he told me what you are giving to me. He said, is the money for you? This may help you because you need it. Now you are a Muslim. And that new Muslim or that revered, Sheikh Abdul Wahid says, he, he, he replied back. And he said, how weak is your marif of Allah? How weak is your marif of Allah? You are inviting me to, he invited me to the one who gives a sustenance to the all creation. And the one who was giving me the provision, even when I was denying him, he never, he never forgot me, even I disobeyed him. Now, how come he forgets me when I obey him, when I'm his own self? And I, I, I take pity upon you that how much weaker your mind of Allah is. He invite me towards him, but you don't know who he is, who is he. So the true mind of Allah, it gives birth to the true tawakkul. And it, it, there are many stories that one of the uh, written by the ulama regarding that how marifah, when you develop the marifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it also develops a tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's a close relationship between the two. And if uh, a person claims marifah, but at the same time, he's not having the reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means it is just a claim which is not supported by the evidence. Because a claim must be supported by the evidence always. Every claim must be supported by the evidence. If I make a claim, for example, I'm the Prime Minister of Malaysia, is a claim. Who will accept this? Nobody, because there's no any evidence which support my argument, my claim. So if a person says, I have the marif of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at the same breath, he, he, he doesn't have the trust upon Allah. So it means uh, he's telling a lie. Because true marifah breeds the true trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the, so we discuss about the marifah and its relationship with taqwa. Marifah its relationship with mahabba, the love. Marifah and its relationship with tawakkul. And lastly, we discuss about the marifah and its relationship with the zuhud. Zuhud, asceticism. The marifah and the asceticism. As far as the marifa is concerned, as I said, that since marifa is that a person's heart must be cleared of all the attachments of the dunya. And only and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must be, must be in the heart. The close relationship of heart, the stronger relationship of heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or to be connected to only one and disconnected from all. The crux of the zuhud is this. Zuhud is not that a person should avoid the dunya, a person should abandon the dunya. It's not the Zuhud, it's a Zuhud in Christianity. They encourage that if you want to get the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you have to renounce the dunya, you have to renounce the world. It can, it can be the Zuhud of the Buddhism who encourage that if you want to get the higher stations, stations of the spirituality, then you have to adopt the first stage that is Tiyad, renouncing the world, freeing yourself from all the attachments of the dunya. Then, passing through the different stages of the meditations, you can achieve the higher stations of the spirituality. So the Zohad of Buddhism is different, Zohad of Christianity, it may encourage you to leave the dunya, but our Zohad is different. The concept of Zohad in Islam is 
that you cannot leave the dunya. Prophet said, Islam. There is no seclusion in Islam. Means you cannot give talaq to the dunya. You cannot leave the dunya. You have to live in the dunya. We are men, we are the social beings. On relief Aristotle, we are not the social animals, we are social beings. We have the sociality in our human nature. We want the family, we want the family members, we want the parents, we want the kids and kids, we want the siblings. It's a human de demand of, of the human nature. You cannot suppress this. That's why Buddhism fails, miser miserably fails, to address the, all the demands of the human nature. It suppresses it. The concept of Zuhat in Islam is that you live in dunya, but at the same time, dunya doesn't go inside your heart. As long as dunya is outside the heart, love of dunya is outside the heart, it won't, it, 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 it won't harm you. That's why we see Sahaba, they were the caliphs, but the most Zahid people on the planet. They ruled over the continents, but they were the most Zahid. Even one of the famous person of the Ummah, he, he was also a Tabi, Malik bin Dina, rahimahullah. Very famous personality. He says, Yaqulun Nas, people say, Malikun Zahidun, Malik is Zahid, I am Zahid. I am no more a Zahid. Zahidun Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. If you want to see the true Zahid, you see Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Who was Umar, Umar, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz? The man who ruled over three continents. Despite ruling over the three continents, what Malik bin Dinar says about him, that he is the true Zahid. And it's also mentioned about him, Atatru dunya fa ghiratan fa ha fataraka ha jumlata. The dunya came to him, extending its hand towards him, except me, but he left it all, but still living in the dunya. So the, so the true zuhad is that we should, we should be detached from the dunya as far as our heart is concerned. Our heart must be detached. So our attachment of heart should be only with Allah. So the true attachment, true marifa, it makes us to, to be detached from all the love of dunya and connects our heart to our creator. That's Allah uh, <laughs> uh, If there is, if a person is, uh, uh, Sheikh Jalaluddin Rumi Rahim has given a beautiful example that our relationship with the dunya, he says that the boat which is meant for the, which is meant for the river, ship of a boat, it is meant for the river. Do you think that the boat is made? A ship is made and we put it at the bank of the river. There's no value of it. Its value is, its significance is when it is on the surface of the river. When it floats on the surface of the river, then its significance can be, it, uh, can be known. Otherwise, it is useless at the bank. At the shore, it is useless. Same way, he says, we are useless if we are out of dunya. So we are meant for this dunya. We cannot, we cannot live without the dunya. We are the dependent beings. We need one another's help. We are dependent beings. And then he says, the water cannot cause any damage to the boat. How long? As long as boat doesn't allow the water to get in. Hmm? So the boat, wherever it wishes, it can float on the surface. Wherever it wishes can go. The water cannot cause any damage to it. However, as long as it doesn't allow it to get in. However, when it allows you to get in, there is a hole in the, in the boat. What happens? The water gets in. What will happen? It will sink now. Before, the water could not do anything to it. Why? Because the boat did not let it to get in. Now, the boat let it to get in. What will happen? It will drown it. It will sink it. Same is case with the believers. As long as our heart is out of dunya, out of love of dunya, our heart is not having the love for the dunya. Even if a person is billionaire, millionaire, it won't harm him. However, if the love of dunya enters the heart, it will sink him. Like controlling your nerves. Yes, controlling the nerves from the temptations of dunya. It will have the inclination towards the dunya. So, so we can see the, the true zuhal is all about the detachment of heart. And opposite to Zohar, this attachment of heart with the dunya. This doesn't mean that you do not form any attachment to um, materials, uh, uh, like you know, your house or anything that you belong to, or even, even, even your family members. Mm -hmm. So is that? No, no, no. Zohar is not. Zohar is not that. 
you develop the separation from the house from the family members and then you confine yourself to the four walls of the room and then making yeah. Allah, 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 yeah. Allah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I say, that they denounce it, yes. Uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a person, uh, uh, a person said, Ya Rasulullah, I love to have the good clothes, good wearing. Then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is, Inna Allah jamal. Allah is jameel, Allah is beautiful and he loves the beauty. So there is nothing wrong with it. What is wrong? When we wear the branded clothes and this develop the arrogance in our heart. There's a problem. However, when, the branded and the ordinary clothes, it, it is all equal to us. It hardly makes any difference to us. That is also what. My, my, my director, I asked this because you know, nowadays parents are so engrossed with their children. Mm -hmm. uh, mothers, especially, they'll be like, their children is their life. It's yeah. the world. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the life revolves around, around the kids. The kids. Yeah. So does this mean that? Uh, you, you, you have seen yes, it is against the Zohar. Why? Yes. How? Allah says, Al -malu wal -malu hayat al -dunya. Indeed, the wealth and the children, it is just a decoration of the dunya. And at another place, Allah SWT says, Inna fitna. Indeed, your wealth and your children are a means of trial for you, as a means of test for you. So stay away, beware, fahdaru. Mm -hmm. So take, take, take precautions. Lest your children becomes a source of doom for you. Mm -hmm. So our love for children should be also for the sake of Allah. Our first and, and foremost priority. Yeah. And the spouse, definitely all, all the relationships we have. Our spouse, our parents, our children, our friends, our nearest and dearest, our neighbors. Whoever is having a relationship with us. This, this must be all subject to the love of Allah. Mm -hmm. The love of deen. It must take the precedence. And that's a true beauty of life. So like, it's very uncomfortable when, when, when there, are, there are mothers who say that, oh, um, you know, uh, my kids are my life. You know, uh, I, can, I will die without my children. Oh. It is just an exaggeration on their part, otherwise, <laughs> uh, so, yes, nobody will die on behalf of others. Yes. It is just the exaggeration. However, sometimes the, the, they develop such a way of life that they cannot live without them. And yeah. that's not good because yeah. our sole concern should be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Because will make like Child is very sick. They will always do harm. Uh, because sometimes mothers they will, uh, pass it on to me. Yes. Yeah, that's, 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 that's okay. That's, yeah. that's, that's not okay. We should ask Allah Subhanahu to grant a shifa to him. Yeah. So this way we are going to challenge the, the testers of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Ya Allah, you pass it on to me. Means yeah. I'm I, I'm quite I'm capable. Uh, I'm capable of facing your challenges, your testers. Nobody, Sahnun Rahimahullah is one of the famous students of Imam Malik Rahimahullah. Uh, Sahnun, it's mentioned about him that one day he said to Allah, Ya Allah, you test me the way you wish. You will show, I will show my obedience and my sincerity to you. Just one single test, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused him not to pass the urine. Just one single test. Now he was about to die. He cried a lot, Ya Allah. I cannot, I cannot stand in front of your justice. I seek your forgiveness. So always we must be humble. We must show our, our dependence, our weaknesses before Allah subhanahu We should not say, Ya Allah, whatever we should do from Ya Allah, I'm a weaker creature. Remove the hardships from me. Remove the, the sickness from my children. So don't, don't, don't test us with, a, with such a thing that we cannot bear, we cannot tolerate. Allah teaches us this dua in the Quran. رَبَّنَا وَلَا تُحَمِّلْ عَلَيْنَا إِسْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتُ عَلَيْنَا كَمَا حَمَلْتُ عَلَيْنَا رَبَّنَا لَا تُعْتَ وَلَا تُعْتَ وَلَا تُعْتَ رَبَّنَا لَا تُعْخِزْنَا رَبَّنَا لَا تُعْخِزْنَا إِنَّ سِينَا وَقْتِنَا The last verse of Surah Al-Fatihah رَبَّنَا لَا تُعْخِزْنَا إِنَّ سِينَا وَقْتَنَا رَبَّنَا وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِسْرًا Oh Allah, you do not put the burden upon our shoulders كَمَا حَمَلْتُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِ As you burn the people before us رَبَّنَا وَلَا تُحَمِّلْ لَمَا لَا تُعْقَدُ Ya Allah Oh Allah, do not put the burden upon my shoulders which I cannot bear which is intolerable to me مَا لَا تُعْقَدَ لَنَا بِي which is beyond my capability and capacity so we should always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this thing, not that Allah has passed on that disease to me. That's not a good thing. But better is to ask Allah, you can give him the shifa, speedy recovery, and save us from any test which we cannot we cannot bear, we cannot we cannot tolerate. I don't do it means that for that. I mean like 
And yeah. you got what to do, right? Yes. <laughs> Just expressing our weakness before Allah yeah. is the best form of ubudiyah. The best form of servitude is that when we express our own reality, that is our weaknesses, our helplessness, our dependence upon Allah. So the relationship between ma'rifah and, uh, and zuhud is that, that the true ma'rifah breeds the true zuhud. And what is zuhud? It is all about the detachment, rather the attachment. There was a pious person, he was worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is because of his worship, he became very famous among the people. Though he tried his best to be anonymous, he never wanted to achieve any sort of fame, any pomp and show. But however, when a person is pious, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts his love upon the hearts of the people. It's, and a simple example is, however he tried, tried to cover the fragrance, it will just give its fragrance. You try to just cover it, hide it, block it, but still it will make its way to others. They will come to realize that there is fragrance, there is scent. Same is case with the filth. However, however a person tries to cover the filth, it will give it a foul smell. Same is the case with the people of taqwa and people of wickedness. Those who try to remain anonymous, we see our ulama, our mushtahideen, Imam Shafi says, Imam Ghazali writes about Imam Shafi Rahimullah on that. He said, Imam Shafi used to say that, I wish my knowledge be secret all over the world, but without knowing me. People learn my knowledge without knowing me. Means he wanted to be anonymous, but how, how much fame Allah gave to him? After 1200 years, we still remember him. There's a true respect. There's a true honor. And there are many of our mujtahideen they never want to. And on the other hand, they are the stage-hungry people. <laughs> stage-hungry people. Stage-hungry means they want to they want to be known among the people, to be popular. They are atten attention seekers. I call them stage-hungry. They, 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 they want to be fam famous among the people. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they see after a few months, nobody knows them. Even, okay, if they are celebrities, they are having the high position in the society, after their death, nobody knows yeah, nobody them. Remembers. Nobody remembers them. Yeah. The true love is that the, the true respect of Allah, the true respect which comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that even after hundreds of years, people remember with full reverence, isn't it? Yeah. So the, the 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 true scholars they always try to be in anonymity. They don't want any sort of fame and any sort of pomp and show. And this was also a pious person. Who, who never liked any sort of popularity or fame. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted, wanted to make him famous. So he became famous among the people that he's a true scholar, he's a very pious, he's, he's Zahid. And the king, he also heard about him. That there's a guy, he's very pious, he's, very, he's a good scholar. And he developed a desire to meet him. So the king came to meet him along with a lot of gifts. When he met this sheikh, and he found the sheikh is truly good, knowledgeable, and very pious. So king made, a, made an offer to him and said, Sheikh, I have a request. Uh, I, can, I can make a separate arrangement for you in our palace. If you bless my palace to come and come to live there, I'll be highly obliged. No sooner did he offered him, sheikh accepted the offer. He said, okay, I'll come along with you. So he, he went along with the king to live in the palace. Now they are living, he's living the past and he's enjoying this royal life. Every day he's wearing the expensive clothes. Every day he's having the too expensive food. King initially he thought that since he's exposed to this life very newly, that's why he's doing this. But, but after a certain period of time, around months, two months, three months, four months passed by, the king is becoming more and more now anxious. But what kind of a pious person he is? That he is enjoying all the luxury. He's enjoying the luxurious life here in the palace, same as that of me. Even now he crosses the limits. One day, Sheikh, uh, the king asked him, Sheikh, uh, when I made an offer to you, initially I was fully convinced that you won't accept my offer. So, but without making much effort, when I said to you, and he accepted. And when you came here, now I find that you are crossing all the limits. And uh, 
I don't think that it befits to you. Then what's the difference between you and me? <laughs> I'm enjoying this luxurious life. You're enjoying this luxurious. Then what's the difference between you and me? Uh, Sheikh said, okay, tomorrow morning, I'll give you the answer. Next morning, Sheikh, he wore his own torn clothes, old clothes, and his small bag. He said, if you want the answer to this question, that what's the difference between you and me, you have to leave everything. You have to leave the kingship. You have to leave your spouse. You have to leave your children. And you have to come along with me to a specific, to a far off place. And you have to spend a certain period of time with me. Then I will answer to your question. What's the difference between you and me? The king said, how is it possible? It's impossible. I cannot leave the kingdom. I cannot leave the children. I cannot leave the family. I cannot leave anything. I cannot leave the affairs of the people. The sheikh said, this is the difference between you and me. That I can leave anything for the sake of Allah. And you cannot leave anything for the sake of Allah. This is what. When Allah becomes a sole concern, Allah becomes a sole object in the life. That you can make every kind of sacrifice for the sake of Allah. That's why the true detachment from dunya is a true attachment to Allah. That's, that can be achieved only when you know for whom you are doing this. When you know that you are here for a specific period of time. Just a countable days, Quran says, Ayyama you, are, you are here just for countable days. A handful of days are there. And after this, the real life starts. And these higher values will benefit us there. Then we will come to know the importance of these values, the Marifa, Mahabha, which we discussed so far. We will, we, will, we will be aware now about the importance of sabr, shukur, ikhlas. Nowadays, it seems to be just a relevant thing for most of the people. But soon they will realize the importance and significance of these things. So the true modifier is that oh wow, we know the reality of this dunya. That is just dhillu za'il. Dhillu za'il is a fading shadow. This dunya is and it is also a mazaratul akhirah. It's a field for the akhirah. As you come out, tazra'u tahsud. As you sow here, so shall you reap there. If we develop, if we cultivate the good values which we discussed so far here in dunya, definitely we will reap and harvest its fruits in the akhirah. So ma'rifa, true ma'rifa is this: that we know the reality of this dunya, and we know that this dunya is it's a temporary, is a is, is a is a fading shade. It's a fading shape, which will just, at the time of our death, we will realize that what was the thing I was infatuated by. Imam, Imam An-Nawawi, uh, in his famous book, Riyadh al-Salihin, it's a collection of the hadith, it's an anthology of the hadith. In, the, in it is forward, Imam An-Nawawi, rahimahullah, is mentioned the beautiful ash'ar. I just conclude my talk with these ashar, with these couplets. The beautiful poem that Inna lillahi ibadan futtana talla dunya wa khaful fitana nadaru fiha falamma alimu annaha laysat lil hayy wa tana Inna lillahi ibadan futtana that they are indeed the intelligent servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the genius and the brilliant servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Inna lillahi ibadan futtana they give divorce to the dunya, but not in the meaning of Christians and the Buddhists, <laughs> in terms of detachment of the heart. They divorce the dunya, and they are scared of the trials of dunya. They, they are quite, quite cautious about the trials of the dunya. When they realize, they've contemplated upon the life of dunya. When they contemplated upon this life of dunya, they thought that it is not a befitting place for those who will have the eternal life. It's a mortal dunya, a mortal world with the mortal souls. So this doesn't deserve to be made the accommodation. This, this doesn't deserve to be made a permanent domicile. It's a temporary domicile. It's a temporary living place. So, when they realize that this is not the proper place for us to live because it is mortal. 
will be taken away from this dunya willingly or unwillingly. Yes, I, I always say that when we came to this dunya, did Allah consult us? Would you like to go to the dunya? No. We came to this dunya by the permission of Allah, by the command of Allah. And when we leave this dunya, will he consult us again? Would you like to leave this dunya? It's again the command of Allah. So we came by command of Allah, we have to go by the command of Allah. There's no any choice of ours when we came to this dunya. There's no any choice of ours when we leave this dunya. So this is a mortal thing, mortal dunya, perishing and vanishing dunya. So when the true and brilliant servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they realize it. They realize it, they took, they took this dunya as that of a as that of a river. And a person who is supposed to ferry over the river, who is supposed to cross the river, what he needs, he needs a boat. So they made their pious amal, the good amal, as the boat. So they realized that as long as we are in the dunya, so we cannot escape from the good amal. And that is the only protection for us from droning into this dunya. So they are the true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have got the ma'rifah of Allah. So ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not that, that we are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are crossing the limits of Allah, we are committing the haram and unlawful things, and then we, at the same breath we say, yes, we have got the ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never. So it has a relationship with the taqwa. Now I conclude this, ma'rifah in relation with the, in relation with the taqwa. Ma'rifah, because ma'rifah breeds the taqwa. Ma'rifah breeds the mahabbah. Ma'rifah breeds the tawakkul. And it breeds the zuhd. So all these things are connected. How you know your Lord? How, how much closer you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us uh, the higher stations with ease and comfort and uh, make it easy for us to get his marifa and develop the good qualities in us without any difficulty and with much ease. Amin. Ya Rabbal Alameen. SubhanAllah. What, what, what the brother says, yes, stage hungry, that fame, it becomes flame and it burns on the way, same person. True, very true. Now, inshallah, so this was our, our first part of our marriage of the soul. Now we are going to have second part and there are other important elements for our soul. We are going to discuss about the yaqeen, the levels of the yaqeen, definition of yaqeen and how it helps us to get closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sabr and shukr and ikhlas. So these are the four, four, next, four. next four modules of our next part of merits of soul, inshallah. I hope inshallah we all join there. As, and at the same breath, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a tawfiq, whatever we learn, so that we can translate that into the practice. And then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our amal, our practice, so that we can get the hidayah in dunya and the emancipation and najat in the akhir. Amin ya rabbal alameen. If you have any question, you can, I can ask, please. Did you hear about the uh, the man in India was suing the parents for for free birthday because uh, he didn't ask to be born. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Okay. He's suing the parents. <laughs> he said life sucks and he didn't ask to be born, so it's now suing. If, if, if you would come to know about the purpose of life, then he, he would enjoy the life. <laughs> it is true, right? Before we were. There was a, there's a covenant between us and God. Yes, there's mentioned the Quran. Okay, so there is a, there's a covenant between us. Okay. Actually, we have the different stage of our journey. Our journey is not now, it's our fourth stage. But it is, like you said, it's, like, uh, it's actually not that. Like, well, God didn't ask us whether you want to go to heaven. It's, it's a it's, command. Right? It's, it's a command of Allah. Yeah. So, the covenant is that when Allah created us, so we have one, our first stage is Adam and Adam. Adam and Adam, the stage of nothingness. Yes, when, we, when we were of no mention, yes. then Allah created our souls. Yes. That is Alam al Arwa, second stage. Yes. Our journey started from there. Then there was third stage, Alam al Mithaq, when Allah gathered all the souls 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them, which is mentioned in the Quran, Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? Then the souls cried out, Bala, indeed you are our Lord. To prove that, yes, you are our Lord, Allah sent us to this dunya. So we have made this covenant. So this is our fourth stage, that's not alam al wujud. We are in this now. We are in the fourth stage. After this, and this is the shortest span we are given, alam al wujud. So as far as the previous alam, they were, they were yes. Yeah, we don't know how, long how long, Allah knows the best. And then we have the fifth stage, that is alam al barzakh. So that's between the Qiyamah and the Dunya. That's also too long. Grave. It's a grave. And the, after the Alam al Barzakh, there's another Alam, that is Alam al Akhir. And that's our last stage. So, already we have not discussed it so far, that's yet to come in Asma al Mushra. Do we know about how long we are in the Barzakh? Nobody can know. No, but even if you cannot know even which place we are supposed to leave this dunya, which place we are supposed to die. Allah says in the Quran, Surah Al-Luqman, the last verse of Surah Al-Luqman, no soul knows where he will die. Yeah. Who doesn't know about it? And then how long we remain in the barzakh? Because, because, because we don't know the exact occurrence of the Qiyamah. Quran clearly says, قُلْ إِنَّمَا عِلْمُهَا عِنْدَ رَبِّي we say its knowledge is specifically with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we cannot know about this. Jazakumullah. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atu ilayk. Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzati amma yisifu. Wa salamu ala al-mursilin. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.